This is a horseshoe crab, a creature that's neither a crab nor has anything to do with horses, but it's called a horseshoe crab. At first glance, it might look like a soldier's helmet, but in reality, it's a living fossil. You might ask, if it's a fossil, how can it be alive? The reason we call it a living fossil is because of its age. It's truly the veteran of Earth's living creatures. It's been living on Earth for 450 million years without changing at all, meaning evolution hasn't affected it. Not only do we have no age compared to it, but even dinosaurs are much newer in comparison. Despite being named a crab, biologists say it has nothing to do with crabs, as scorpions and spiders are much closer to it. This creature is the last survivor of an ancient group of arthropods called Merostomata. All the other members of this group have gone extinct, but the horseshoe crab is still here, continuing its life. To get an idea of its age, we should know that these creatures lived on Earth for over 200 million years before the first dinosaurs appeared. Dinosaurs ruled the Earth for over 150 million years, and this guy lived right alongside them until about 65 million years ago, when the dinosaurs went extinct, but the horseshoe crab kept going. If you want to know more about how dinosaurs went extinct, watch this video. As mentioned, these creatures have changed almost nothing over all these years, and evolution hasn't affected them. If you could go back millions of years and look at them, their appearance and body would look just like they do now. That shell on their body isn't a helmet or some extra part, it's part of the creature's skeleton. It's so tough that no creature can pierce it, except for sharks. But sharks aren't really a threat to them because they live on the ocean floor and sharks don't bother with them. This is one of the reasons they've lived so long. They haven't had a tough enemy. One interesting thing about this crab is its eyes. It has 10 of them. Two main eyes are similar to ours, located on either side of its head, and the other eyes are scattered across its body, like on its back near its tail and even under its body. With all these eyes and sensors, it can pretty much see everywhere. What's even more interesting is that at night, or deep in the ocean where there's no light, its back eyes become super sensitive to light, allowing it to live easily in darkness, so darkness isn't a big deal for it. Horseshoe crabs spend most of their time in shallow coastal waters. In one way, they're similar to humans, especially men, and that's their love for digging and rolling around in the sand. As for food, they eat everything, they don't say no to anything they can catch, like worms, snails, clams, algae, and basically anything they can find. You might wonder how these crabs reproduce. Every year, during mating season, which is spring and summer, the females come to the shore and lay eggs. Before the females bury their eggs in the sand, the males follow them and fertilize the eggs, and then they head back to the water. It's interesting to know that females can lay up to 20,000 eggs in various spots along the shore, which reduces the risk of birds eating the eggs. After a few weeks, when these eggs turn into larva, they get washed into the sea by the tides, and they grow there until they're ready to come back to the shore for mating. We said that it hasn't had a tough enemy, which is why it's still around, but that's not the main reason for its longevity. The main reason it's lasted so long and hasn't changed for hundreds of millions of years is that it has the best and simplest immune system, an efficient system that doesn't allow any bacteria or infection to kill it. The horseshoe crab lived for 450 million years without any trouble, and nothing threatened it until the 1960s, when nosy humans, sorry, I mean scientists, realized that the reason for its longevity was its blood, blue and unique in every way. The blood of this creature has amazing power in fighting infections. The first university to discover this was the University of Massachusetts in 1968. In their experiments, they found that when a bacterium enters the horseshoe crab's body, its blood immediately reacts. Its blood cells, called amoebocytes, surround the bacteria and create a gel-like substance that traps the bacteria. This process is so fast and effective that almost no bacteria can escape it. When a troublesome bacteria enters a living organism, it eventually turns into an infection. Infections can vary in degree. It can be severe enough to kill, enough to keep the organism sick, or mild enough that the organism can survive. Luckily, antibiotics nowadays solve this problem. If we want to explain infection in simple terms, it's when bacteria enter the body, but they don't do anything bad themselves. Instead, they release a toxin called exotoxin. It's this exotoxin that creates the infection. 
This same toxin can even kill a human. The immune system of living creatures evolved specifically to defend against this toxin. For example, the immune system of mammals, including humans, is far more complex than, say, a spider's immune system. However, the horseshoe crab, which is quite similar to a spider, has a unique immune system that can be said to be even better than mammals. The immune system of this creature has evolved in such a way that it sees everything as an enemy. There's no fooling it. Any bacteria that enters its body is doomed. Take the human body, for example. When a bacteria enters, white blood cells attack and kill it. But the bacteria still has time to release its toxin. Even though the bacteria dies, it releases another toxin called endotoxin. This is similar to the exotoxin it tries to release at first, meaning it causes infection, makes you sick, and can even kill you. But the blood of this horseshoe crab is so powerful that it traps the bacteria so well that even the dead bacteria can't release that endotoxin. After these discoveries, this crab became quite valuable, but not in a way that benefits it. The crab's blood has become one of the most expensive liquids in the world, priced at $15,000 per litre. You might ask, how do these discoveries help us? The most important thing scientists have done with this blood is that they realise they can use it to test new vaccines. Before this blood was used in laboratories, new vaccines were tested on animals, on rabbits, mice or other animals. Usually, these animals would die. But this blue blood has made the process faster, safer, and it doesn't lead to the killing of animals. Nowadays, anything that's meant to enter the human body has to be sterilised to the highest standard to ensure not even a single bacterium or germ enters. Things like serums, vaccines, and other similar products. Before scientists discovered this blood, they would take a batch of vaccines, inject them into three rabbits, and if within three or four hours one of those rabbits got a fever, the entire batch of vaccines would have to be thrown out because that meant it contained bacteria. This process took a lot of time, cost a lot of money, and killed animals. And even then, it wasn't all that reliable. That's why this blue blood is worth $15,000 per litre. Its high price is also due to the scarcity of these crabs and the difficulty in extracting their blood. Most of these crabs live on the east coast of the United States, from as far north as Maine to as far south as the coasts of Mexico. They can be found along the entire coastline. It's not like they just go around taking the blood of these crabs, and it doesn't matter if they die. Their species is endangered, and each one lives up to 25 years. That's why there's a system in place where a few times a year, the crabs are captured, taken to labs, 30% of their blood is drawn, and once they're sure the crabs are healthy, they're returned to their habitat. This blood has indeed done a great service, but on the other hand, many people argue it's not right. Sure, they take only 30% of the crab's blood and return them to nature, but many of them die after a while, and that's what puts them at risk. The high price and effectiveness of this poor creature's blood doesn't let people dwell on these issues too much though. Meanwhile, many scientists are trying to create this blood artificially. If they succeed, it'll be great news for the crabs. Sometimes, these crabs gather on the shore together, and do you know what they say? We've lived on this earth for 450 million years, survived five mass extinctions, endured ice ages, and not even meteor strikes could wipe us out. Volcanoes erupted, but they couldn't do anything to us. But now, in the end, we've fallen into the hands of these creatures who only recently arrived on Earth, and now they're bottling our blood. What do you think? 